Today's topic is button mushroom cultivation. Almost all of you must be familiar with white button mushrooms as they are very popular and widely cultivated. Its scientific name is Agaricus bisporus. It is being cultivated worldwide and it is one of the most famous and vastly cultivated mushroom species. The button mushrooms has several different strains and varieties among it. Broadly two varieties are famous. One is brown in color and another one is in white. According to the different stages of its growth, it is known by different name. When they are young and immature, they are commonly referred as white or the creamy mushrooms and when the caps or the gills open up, they are known as portobello mushrooms. There is another summer strain of button mushroom which is known as Agaricus bitorquis. It is also referred as summer button mushrooms as it requires 4 to 6 degree higher temperature than Agaricus bisporus. Stay with us till the end of the video and you will end up learning all about button mushrooms, its growing conditions, the various popular methods of growing it, compost preparation, spawning, casing, harvesting, etc. I will try to teach you all in the least possible time. The button mushroom is a superfood. It's not only delicious but full of essential nutrients like fiber, protein, vitamin D, selenium, phosphorus, etc. White button mushrooms are low in calories and sugar. They are an excellent source of vitamin B12 as well. Scientifically, it has been proven that regular consumption of button mushrooms is beneficial for anemia patients, it improves immunity, it's good for bones and healthy heart. It also helps in weight loss as there is very less amount of calories per 100 gram of button mushrooms compared to other kind of foods and vegetables. Mushrooms contain very high amount of protein and they are hence considered for supplements or alternative for non-vegetarian foods. Button mushrooms are of soft texture and these are versatile, hence used in wide varieties of dishes, hence almost all good restaurants do serve this delicacy. It commands very high market demand, hence it also commands very high market value and there is a great gap between the demand and supply of this species of mushroom. As the public awareness about the health benefits and its delicacy increases day by day, the gap is only increasing. There is a great opportunity lying for new entrepreneurs in button mushroom cultivation. Cultivation of mushrooms are very profitable. All it takes is you have to protect your crops from various kind of pests and disease and you have to know the proper growing conditions. All it takes is three types of investment to start a mushroom farm. First one is money which you will invest on farm structure, various kinds of equipments to maintain the climate conditions. The major structures includes spawn unit, composting unit, cropping unit and post harvest area where you will be processing your crops. The second investment is your valuable time and patience. Growing mushrooms do require time and patience. Then comes the third and most important investment. It is the investment in your knowledge. Lack of knowledge and training is the biggest contributor towards the failure. You may end up investing a lot of money and a lot of time but it's worth it only if you really know what you are doing, the process, the behind the scene of the fungi and all the criteria you need to meet to get good crops. Stay with this channel and you will end up knowing a lot of things about mushroom. We will keep on posting regular videos about it. You can also join the exclusive training programs on button mushrooms and several other varieties of mushroom offered by BM Mushroom Academy. Just visit www.bmmushroom.com. Details are given in the description. Commercially, button mushroom cultivation is done in indoor and it can be cultivated throughout the year. All it requires is a place where you can control the temperature, moisture and airflow. It is not necessary to invest huge capital on farm construction. It can be done in a small and economical way. You can use village structures like hut or the cottage. The inside racks can be constructed by using cheap alternative sources like bamboo, woods, etc. Generally, these types of button mushroom structures are good for seasonal farmers. But if you wish to avoid recurring maintenance cost and long lasting farms, it is good and recommended if you invest in permanent structures which do contains high tech weather controller and various kind of sensory systems. Even though it will take a little bit of more investment but there are several ways through which you can design a insulated farm. You can use glass walls, you can use puff panels, thermocoles, etc. Now a major factor comes into play which is called temperature management. Actually, 
for button mushroom cultivation you require two different kinds of temperature there are two phases in mushroom growth the first one is vegetative growth and the second one is fruiting stage both the stages require different kind of temperature for vegetative growth button mushroom agaricus bisporus requires 21 to 25 degree celsius for proper mycelium growth what is vegetative growth when we mix our spawn with the substrate which is also known as compost the mycelium which is a fungus actually starts spreading throughout it this stage is referred as vegetative growth it's like a tree is growing and when the fruiting comes like in a mango tree the fruit will come and that stage is the fruiting stage when actually the mushroom pinhead starts appearing during that stage we need to maintain a temperature between 12 to 18 degree mushroom pin initiates due to abrupt change in temperature and moisture what happens is that when the mycelium spreads throughout the compost due to the lack of food it requires to further multiply and for that purpose once it is exposed to extreme weather condition like uh, certain decrease in the temperature and increase in the humidity level it starts producing mushrooms the relative humidity must be in the range of 80 to 90 percent there is another factor which do play a very important role in button mushroom cultivation it's the carbon dioxide level hence proper aeration and ventilation ducts need to be designed in a farm as during the initial phase of vegetative phase it requires a high amount of co2 high concentration of co2 and during fruiting stage there must be proper air circulation and mixture of oxygen with the co2 inside the chamber so that proper growth of the mushrooms occurs to start a button mushroom you will require to prepare compost you will need spawn and you will also require casing material let us understand what is compost compost is actually the substrate for button mushroom cultivation you require specialized compost there are two popular methods using which compost are generally prepared one is long method it takes around 28 days and another one is short method it requires around 12 to 15 days in the compost it's all about the ratio of carbon and nitrogen approximately at least 17 is to 1 cn ratio should be maintained the sign of a good compost are proper moisture level proper cn ratio and proper pasteurization in button mushroom cultivation the quality of the compost is paramount you must be wondering why for the button mushroom cultivation we need special compost but for other mushrooms like oyster and shiitake we didn't need it to produce special compost actually what happens is first of all you need to understand that uh, like other mushrooms button mushrooms they are fungi and fungi are neither plants nor animals they have their own distinct role in the nature Fungi are natural decomposers of the planet. Their role is to decompose dead logs, trees or any organic materials in the nature. Without them, nobody would have been alive. Because of the fungi only, our plants and the ecosystem is surviving. All the essential nutrients in the soil which the plants get is because of the fungi. Fungi also plays a role of communicator because of them only the plants can break the essential nutrients from the soil and absorb them plants also communicate between themselves because of them only so in nature fungi are of various kinds primarily they are of three types the edible mushrooms they are generally all saprophytic fungi they are of three types primary secondary and tertiary the oyster mushrooms and the shiitake mushroom those kind of mushrooms are primary fungus what happens in the nature is like when a dead tree falls the first variety of the fungi which will attack them is the primary fungi the primary decomposers like oyster mushroom they will first grow on the plant what happen will they will first break down the nutrients like like cellulose lignin and they will try to decompose the wood but they have little bit of capabilities and they cannot break all the nutrients in a wood so once it's over once the oyster mushrooms complete their role they break down the upper layer then what happens is the woods start decomposing they start rotting once the primary decomposers finishes its work then the role of secondary decomposers like button mushroom starts they start eating the rotten woods 
and logs and the compost which are naturally prepared in forest it's similar to the animal kingdom as once the fresh flesh is been eaten by tiger or lion and after that the hyenas will come and after that the small creatures and then the bacteria they will come and in the end all the animals will be dead and decomposed similarly the fungi also play their role hence the button mushroom falls into the secondary decomposers and they do not eat fresh substrates so they require a special kind of substrate which are little bit of rotten little bit of infested with bacteria and it do have proper carbon and nitrogen level mimicking the natural conditions in the forest the substrate on which button mushrooms grows is mainly prepared from a mixture of plant waste like cereal straw wheat straw paddy straw then you will further need to add urea superphosphate gypsum there will be several kinds of supplements also involved like rice bran wheat bran and the water moisture level should be added to it in the long method of composting these are done in outdoor during season time like in the winter session but there is always a risk of uh, rain when if the rain falls on the freshly prepared compost it may dilute the amount of nutrients required for cultivation and that's a risk so there should be always a structure prepared which will always protect your compost from the rain and natural environment and conditions according to the area there are different kinds of available materials hence there is no proper and unique method of composting different places uses different kinds of methods different places will require different kind of substrate mixture like in some places chicken manure is available there you can use it as a nitrogen source but in another place you may end up using urea in the short method of composting there involves bunkers generally there must be two bunkers the first one is an open type with pipes laying underground in the second one it's also called tunnel this is kind of insulated room here the temperature gets moderately high and it's the final phase where the compost is being prepared during the first phase of compost preparation generally paddy straw wheat straw is placed in layers and sufficient water is added to the stack along with several kind of fertilizers added in every alternative day and they are being rotated regularly for proper mixture the compost preparation in itself is a vast topic covering it in one single youtube video is little bit difficult so in further future videos i will try to cover it but if you are really serious about button mushroom cultivation and you really want to know everything about it like how the process of microbes and the competitors really convert the ammonia into microbial protein and the in depth process through which the button mushroom compost and other factors which do really affects it we can maintain then i do recommend you to join the training program to join the training program the description has all the details also you can download the free download materials which do contains essential formulas for compost preparation and casing soil preparation the next stage is spawning once the compost is ready and prepared then the stage of spawning comes either you can prepare your own spawn preparing your own spawn is easy and you can easily produce commercial level of spawn you will learn that in the training course as well or you can directly procure the spawns from any reputed lab you can also buy the spawn directly from our website bmmushroom.com the process of mixing the spawn with compost is called spawning the different methods followed for spawnings are spot spawning in spot spawning lumps of spawn are planted 5 cm deep inside the compost another method is surface spawning the spawn is evenly spread on the top of the compost and then mixed in the depth of 3 to 5 cm and another method is layer spawning in layer spawning about 3 to 4 layers of spawns are mixed with the compost the quantity of spawn required will be 1% of the weight of the compost for example you will require 1 kg of spawn for 100 kg of compost after the process of spawning is over it takes around 2 weeks for spawn running During this time the fungal bodies grow out from the spawn and takes about 2 weeks around 12 to 14 days to colonize the temperature maintained in the cropping room should be on an average around 21 to 25 degree the relative humidity should be around 90% then comes the stage of casing 
The compost beds after complete spawn run should be covered with a layer of soil known as casing. The layer should be around 3 to 4 cm thick. It is essential to induce fruiting. The casing material should be having high porosity, high water holding capacity and the pH level should be between 7 to 7.5. The formula for preparing the casing soil is provided in the description. The casing soil before application should be pasteurized at around 66 to 70 degrees Celsius for around 7 to 8 hours or treated with formaldehyde 2% solution. Once the casing is over, it will take another 7 days for casing run. In this stage, the mycelium will cover the casing soil as well. Once the casing soil is covered with the mycelium, you will, you will have to change the climate condition inside the fruiting room. The temperature should be lowered around 13 to 18 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity should be around 85%. You will also need to circulate the air and add fresh oxygen inside the room. Under favorable environmental conditions, the mushrooms will start fruiting. You can get on an average 20 kg of fresh mushrooms from 100 kg of compost. Total mushroom cycle shall be around 60 days and you will end up getting 2 to 3 profitable flushings. Good harvest will depend upon several factors like proper moisture condition in the casing soil. There must be 2 to 3 light sprays per day for moistening the casing soil. Proper ventilation should be there. The COT concentration must be between 0.08 to 0.15 percentage. Button mushroom growing is not at all complicated as it looks. You can even in fact end up growing small chamber or small boxes of button mushrooms inside your own house. It's quite, it's quite easy and using regular day to day items you can also create a good amount of compost. All you require is a little bit of training in that direction. Whether you have tried growing before or failed or you have never ever grown mushroom in your life, you can join our online training course. This course will take you by hand and walk you step by step through the easiest way to grow delicious mushrooms. Anyone can cultivate mushrooms profitably. Are you willing to empower yourself with the knowledge? If yes, then subscribe the channel. I will be back with more videos on mushroom cultivation. Thank you.